are now tuned into the Burnout Podcast. I am your host, as always, Rebecca Shelby. I already know what I like to do, so let's talk about it. And I am your co-host, Dre, a.k.a. D Hustler. What's the word, y'all? Let's talk about it, Becky. Talk to him. Yes, one more explosion. That was fine. <laughs> <laughs> but, um, yes, yeah, so we are back with episode two. Yes, yes. Season two. Yes. Of the Burnout Podcast. This is also, like, why our second episode got to be done? During the global pandemic. Yeah, like this is crazy, like yo. <laughs> this shit is like, too much. Just no respect to the podcast. Period. And the it's thing crazy. that's blowing mine is just like it's so hard to like. I haven't been no yo. This is the first like the last mm-hmm. time y'all seen me was the last time I was out my house. Wow. This is the first time I've been outside of my house. I ain't gonna lie, I've been in and out my house because I gotta make moves, but that's neither here nor there. I don't have work. Everything is just like I'm like. I'm scared. <laughs> like, everything is just a lot. Like, even it today, is. like, when I told my mother I was leaving, she's like, what? Leaving? Where you going? And it's crazy. When I went to go for my workout session this morning, my grandmother was like, you leaving? What's going on? Why are you leaving so early? I said, I got to do this, man. Yeah, I'm crazy. just like, yo, my mother, she's just like, oh, well, make sure when you go outside, wear gloves, wear this, sanitize. I wear gloves here, and I'm touching all on this mic, mic because this entire room is bleached <laughs> down, <laughs> light sword down, everything. Yes. I would not be this free and comfortable. Listen, if a little sidebar free. note for everybody. Please wash your hands and carry around hand sanitizer. Yes. It's very important at Seriously, this stage. Seriously, we got this yes. shit. I actually was going to tell Math to leave the hand sanitizer right, right, right here to advertise cleanliness. I wish I had a mask on Y'all so I could just advertise. Yes. 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 Use yes. hand sanitizer. sanitizer. Please. But you want to know something, too? It's so, just like, aside from the virus, I just know this has to be creating like a lot of anxiety it and is. Like it's, problems it's, it's for people. A lot of mental health issues for these people out here because a lot of people don't know how to deal with this. You know how people do they ignorant. Yeah, they yeah. take it as a joke. Not even I wouldn't even say nah. ignorant. It's just like it's so much going on oh. in the world. Oh. Even if you That's taking this shit serious, like for example, I have anxiety. And Me too. I, I'm, Me too. I would be lying if I said this shit is like I'm not super anxious. Like I know how to manage my anxiety. Yeah. But like I would be lying if I didn't say this shit isn't creating some type I mean, of... It, it does make you kind of anxious. For me, it didn't really make me as anxious. But now as the epidemic is going, like getting worse, it has me on my seat like, whoa. Like, what could be next? You know what I'm saying? Right. So it's like, uh, gotta be precautious no matter what yeah. I do. Yo, let me tell you, my fucking cousins and family, they got the fucking whole... Gas mask, the fucking Everything. biohazard. The biohazard. <laughs> yeah, I'm like, I didn't the even boots. know you could like buy these. And they're like, yeah. <laughs> I'm like, yo, niggas is ready for war. Niggas is, niggas is serious. A lot of people buying guns, just throwing that out there. A lot of people mm. getting their gun license and stuff. Why? Let's because. Let's talk about it. Now, let's talk about it. What's the word right now? The word <laughs> is, though, martial law. Okay. A K A. What is it? The, um, the, st- it start with an S. It is an act, though. Starvator act, something like that. Mm-hmm. But basically, what it is is it's a two. It's a mandate. It's a mandated two week quarantine right. for people in the U.S. So it's basically it's gonna be local peacekeepers in terms of like NYPD or the local sheriff's department. Like then it's that. Gonna, yeah, military, <laughs> military, and then there's gonna be national guard on top of the military being there just for reinforcements. Hell yeah, they're so gonna pe- be like yeah, they're gonna just be killing people on sight. <laughs> If you after if you out after a certain time for the curfew, you're gonna be killed Period. because we don't know if you have it or not, and they don't care if you do or not. But no not for nothing, like martial law is so American. It is American. Like that's just like staying. America's the only democracy you. country that's that has slaves still. Just throwing that out there. Oop, oop, oop. We ain't but we so don't. Into it. Oh, I'm sorry. <laughs> Let me stop. Can I give them some more tea with some more yeah, sugar? I in mean, it? let's let's spill a little more yeah, tea. Yeah, because what's the snapple fact? To me. Well, for a fact that America has a real, real dark history that a lot of people don't like to bring up. America was built off of bloodshed and killing its own people. Period. So if you believe that it was all about peace and little BS that the school teaches you, like Indians got 
raided over by the pilgrims. No, that's false. You want to know something? Not even to cut you off, so, but it's of just funny how like you ever notice? We all been to middle school, not middle school. We all been to elementary school. Yes. Hopefully, yes. um, it's funny how the first thing they teach y'all about Thanksgiving is oh the pilgrims and Thanksgiving, and then when you get into high school then they teach you after like oh no they came and killed all these motherfuckers yeah. after they made them dinner. because educate the the, the the united states of america educational system is built to teach us a specific thing they want us to teach at the right. end of the day they don't want us to gain our own knowledge because if we gain our own knowledge we'll be too powerful for them we'll overrun this country they don't want that right so um i guess getting more into like um how do you feel about all of this that's going on like as far as like your feelings and your emotions and everything well, with me my feelings are kind of strong with me i'm not more i'm not an emotional person like that so i'm kind of blank but for my grandmother's sake i'm very emotional mm-hmm. because at the end of the day she's 73 years old yeah, you gotta she, be there for grandma she, yeah of course that's my ride or die that's my heart at the end of the day she's been holding me down since i was born and she has respiratory issues. So, in that case, I have to know within myself that I have to be precautious of her. She okay. comes first. It's not even about me at this point because I'm young. I can fight this off. I feel like, and I know it at the end of the day, I take care of myself. But that's my grandmother. It's only but so much she could do. And she's already invulnerable. So, I have to protect her at all costs. Because without her, I ain't got nothing. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, like, and that's a real. big one. Like, And and that's what a lot of people like let it go over their head is that they don't have knowledge within themselves to protect themselves, even if they don't have elderly people around them. They just don't have the knowledge. Uh, I don't know. For me, like I just been like one, like my mom. She's very vulnerable because she has a heart condition and stuff mm. like that. She's a little older. I'm not gonna call her old lady because she found out if I call her older woman. She's a strong black on this woman. Podcast. She's a strong black. Honey, might have to tell her to watch it tonight. Yes, she's a younger <laughs> woman, but it's just one of them things. Like, I just I feel so like it's just like, what do you do? How do you like like what what could you do? Self quarantine. Yeah, wash that's your it. hands and accumulate as many products as you can because at the end of the day. This martial law well, is going to come to what effect. What you call it? Accumulate, but also be mindful. Mindful, yes. Because another thing, too, is like my heart has been breaking these past three days because literally all I've been seeing is people posting about how they can't get formula and baby wipes for their kids. Because people selling out BJ's, Costco's, and everything like savages with no respect. Bro, I seen a motherfucker on Murder on Broadway selling um, masks. Oh. Gloves. Well, anything. It's New York. Anything a hustle. Yeah, <laughs> I, yeah, of course. But it's just like, yo, like. If you don't have a baby, don't buy baby wipes, period. Like, I don't, I don't care how people feel. Oh, what if the water stop running? Da da da. Because you take it for somebody wipes. that needs. Yeah, buy regular. Because the thing is that people don't understand is we could use, all right, as adults, we could use baby wipes, but babies can't use adult wipes. So mm. it's like, y'all taking this shit, y'all taking from somebody's That's kid. Really and it's just like, all right, cool. Like, you want to be precautious, but like be fucking mindful because I've been seeing the craziest shit. Like some girl, she been posting for like three days on my timeline, and she's like, "Yo, I have not got formula for my daughter yet." Mm. Period. Like, so be mindful, people. You're starving babies out mm-hmm. there, and you're hurting elderly. The two mm-hmm. main important people right now in this world that need to be saved is children, infants, toddlers, whatever. Same category, and elderly, <laughs> and elderly. Because at the end of the day, the babies are what help. Us grow into elderly, and the elderly is what give us the the knowledge and the wisdom to mm-hmm. live on longer to be their age. Mm-hmm. So we have to protect them at all but, costs. And now you just know, like, I feel like old people is dying younger and younger. Yes. Like I feel like before, like there be older people who are like you know, like before niggas' grandmothers and grandfathers was like you know living pretty much a bountiful life. Like mm-hmm. feel me now, like I feel like people grandparents is dying younger and younger. Evolution. Like, yeah, like people, Evolution. grandparents is dying at 58. Because, well, with me, I personally believe it's pharmaceuticals. Pharmaceuticals kills the body from the inside out. And after a while, through evolution, your your, ba- your legacy that's passed on will start to reciprocate them same traits that the pharmaceuticals gave you. And you'll end up like dying a lot quicker than you should. Yeah. Because honestly, as old people, we should be living to 100 and something years old. 
Mm-hmm. Naturally, yeah, naturally, but not for nothing. I do think about this though, because I remember, um, actually at one of my great aunt's funeral, yeah. she died when she was ninety nine, like just about to be a hundred. That's a blessing, and yeah, huge blessing. Ooh. And basically, like the I don't know who he was to her, but the person that gave the funeral sermon was basically saying like she's seen everything, and when you really think about it, like who want to go through a hundred years of this country, like as a black person like who would really want to live through all of that so i always thought about that like yeah that's kind of true like even though we're supposed to live longer it's just like we're made to die young right this but country is built for first of the the country's too like overpopulated so they're trying to cut down on people anyway Mm-hmm. That, so. so that yo it's funny because i seen a post today and people were like i'm not gonna jump too deep into the conspiracy y'all know i love a good conspiracy i ain't gonna get too deep into it but i seen something like people were like this is population control and i'm like i wouldn't be surprised if it was because china just repealed um the one child law in 2019 mm-hmm. and then what the beginning of 2020 is when this virus came out but as math said before before the show started, he said that China already has it under control. Don't let it fool you. Mm-hmm. Like, uh, well, in my personal opinion, mm. I feel like it took China too long to get it under control. I feel like they have it under control now because, like, there's rumors that this virus, like, China has known about this virus since late November. Like, yeah. Period. Like they've known about this for a while now. So I mean, if you have a virus running rampant in your country for about three to four months, yeah, I would hope you would have this shit on lock by now. True. <laughs> Feel me? It's just like it's a lot. It is a lot. It's crazy. But um, damn. Oops. Right. But Hold on. um. Oops. <laughs> but just like moving on, um past like the actual conspiracy stuff let's talk about because it because there is a lot of fear mongering going on yes. in the media like matt t- talked about earlier we have yes. a lot of talks in here we talk about a lot of stuff here at extreme media before i start my show and to get off of just that i just want to like um talk to people so what's the word like i just want to talk to people like you know how are y'all how are y'all feeling like yes. what are y'all feeling about what is your this? emotional state right now one of the things i have been seeing a lot online is like people are like extremely bored and yes. not for nothing i feel like in this generation extreme boredom is like horrible because like when motherfuckers get bored in this generation motherfuckers start doing stupid, stupid shit. shit like i will never forget when they canceled school and stuff like that when hurricane sandy came and all of that niggas was online bugging like the memes oh. like like i feel like when people when stuff like natural disasters come through like if you're not someone who's heavily on social media you don't know all of like the fuckery people actually do on social media yeah. because it's like niggas is in their house all day every day all they Chatting have to up, do is nothing. to get on instagram Damn. facebook and twitter and it's just like people are trying to like be the funniest like i'm gonna do the funniest joke i'm gonna do this i'm gonna do that and eventually it gets to the point where motherfuckers is risking themselves. yeah and then they're not understanding how serious the problem is right, they just right. talking just to talk just to be cool like fucking the other day somebody came and one thing people know about me is i hate stupid shit <laughs> like niggas came to my crib and they was playing some video of some whole tap woke dude and i used that with air quotes and very loosely because shit he was talking about was like Whoa. what the fuck bro and he's on there talking about y'all are so sleep this is what they're doing they're getting everybody sick so everyone got to get the vaccine and they're gonna put the mark of the beast in the vaccine and i'm just like really bro that then was, he that just was like crazy. but if you're a black person you don't got to get the vaccine because black people can get corona and i'm just like Oops. It's a couple of your favorite basketball players Mom, that got the coronavirus. My, my favorite basketball player. When I seen Idris Elba had that shit, like one of I the love goats. Idris. One of the goats. Everybody know I love him. Like he is so wonderful fun. actor, and he is just like the embodiment of black love with his wife. And she got a crush on that man. 
Not even a crush. Don't who crack. don't like Idris Elba? I don't know. I just like him as an actor. Like, that's what I'm saying. Like, who don't like <laughs> him, like though? Him. <laughs> like, if you don't think he's sexy, you like him as an actor. I can't question. I can't answer All that. right, so you like him as an actor. Yes, that's That's it. what I'm saying. Who don't like him? I like him. You like him. You like Idris, right? <laughs> <laughs> That's why I'm unimpressed. <laughs> but no, like when I seen he had that shit, y'all, I was like, my heart, like not Idris. But what a coincidence that as soon as somebody said that black people cannot, I'm raising up. As soon as somebody proclaimed that black people couldn't get the coronavirus look what happened the next day he just helped record i will argue that though i, I will a, argue that come because on, let me hear in atlanta there was a lot of coronavirus cases out there they're probably one of the most heavily hit um not even state but cities because a lot of people forget atlanta is just a city in it georgia true. like it's not an entire so it was a lot of corona cases in atlanta and um i i don't want to say that one I don't want to say they were the first state to quarantine, but they were one of the first. Georgia was one of the first because Maryland of how many was cases actually. was in Atlanta. And if y'all know anything about Atlanta, that's literally the blackest part of America. It's yes. nothing but black people in Atlanta. Nothing but black people. So that yes. means yes. if they had high corona cases, it was a lot of black it was, people. Yeah, because white people, I would argue, are the minority. In Atlanta, just that one city, not in the world. No, just, just that one city. We did something down the there. Strongest black, black people in are free rent, <laughs> not free but rent, um, cheap rent. <laughs> can we just touch base? Like I know we're in America right now, but I just want to say how Italy was one of like the first country to quarantine the whole country. Yeah, and they still having over six hundred thousand death totals. Yeah, because more. I, you wanna know, it's crazy. So what's really going on in there? Well, no. one, I feel like usually when these pandemics happen, like, for example, I was telling you about the post I made on Facebook about, like, I'll touch on it deep, um, briefly, because a lot of people seem to like it. I'll touch on it briefly, but this is going into, like, a bigger point. Mm -hmm. So, when I had made a post basically saying, like, when Ebola happened, nobody had no problem um, bullying African people, talking about Africans got Ebola, not supporting African businesses. So why do black people? Because it's only black people I feel feeling so sorry for Chinese food restaurants what, what going out of business. What type black people? African American black yes, people. Yes, African Americans. Okay. I only see African Americans getting yeah. upset about the China man. Anyway, what you call it? That aside, when Ebola first hit. President Obama was like, uh uh, I ain't playing that shit. He shut off all every borders. Day. He shut off every all day. borders. He's like, nope. And then when after he did that, people in the media we seen about a few days later, three people did have Ebola and they were two doctors that were in um Liberia fighting, fighting Ebola, Ebola and then one person that happened to get in contact with one of them. Period. Feel me? But America handled that shit accordingly. Quick. Like quick It was none of that what? You see with this Coronavirus Motherfuckers took Mad long To shut down borders Niggas took forever To do everything So what? it was just like One of them things Like we're I, reaping the, ben the after effects Of people being careless With a serious virus Yeah I mean I can attest to that Because I see people Being careful About their health But honestly, I've been outside these pe this week, and I've seen so many people outside. Even though the the numbers have digressed and people have been in the house, mm -hmm. I've seen a, a moderate amount of people outside driving cars, going to work yeah, on I've the train. Yeah, I've seen a lot of people like, outside too. Okay, it's serious. Now my question is, it's serious, but how serious is it? Well, to I the mean, naked eye, you know what I'm saying? Because there's still people out here really traveling, moving with no care in the world, like whatever. I mean, I feel like at this point, it just depends on what areas are the most heavily infected. But you would think New York would be one of the most heavily infected. Yeah, it's one but of the most populated if you cities. somebody, yeah. me and you, we don't live in all of New York. I True. just live in Best Eye. You just live in whatever part of Queens you live in. So, for example, I looked up um, what were the counts of the coronavirus in Brooklyn. And I think like four or five days ago, it was at 24. So, I would assume it's probably like at 30-something. Probably now. Probably. But 
out the entire state is five thousand and something cases. That's that's, that's very so little. So thirty out of five thousand. Um, whoever has corona, the chances of me, mind you, Brooklyn is the biggest borough. So we have the least Queens amount is of the corona. the biggest borough. Just throwing that out there. Queens is the biggest borough Queens in New York. Is the biggest yes, I thought Brooklyn was the, the biggest borough. No, Brooklyn is the second biggest borough. It's, wow. it's basically Long Island. If you want to be real, Brooklyn and Queens and Long Island, it's Long Island in reality, but they broke it up as Brooklyn and Queens' boroughs, and the rest is Long Island. Just All right. Well, Brooklyn is huge. Period. Thank you, OG, like man. Anybody that know right. anybody that know anything about Brooklyn, ever been to Brooklyn, mm -hmm. like, Love you, Brooklyn. like, you can be in one part of Brooklyn, and it's a total different, different vibe, vibe on the other end. Yeah. So, and it's just like Queens is so diverse. Like, you could be one place mm -hmm. doing something, and then you in up the block. So the for me, for Brooklyn to be one of the biggest boroughs in yes. New York City, one of the most overcrowded states, is like, and we only have like 24 between 30 cases that of corona. Mm -hmm. What are the chances of me getting in contact with them 30 people? Not saying it can't happen. But it's very slim. Yeah, it's especially slim. if I'm just staying in my one neighborhood. Yeah. Like, I've literally only been here in my house. See, it'd be a difference. Like, I'm going to be honest, it would be a difference not trying to disrespect anybody in the Bronx or something like that or Harlem. But if you were in those com compact spaces, Excuse me. You would probably have a more high, a higher chance of all catching. All the corona is in the Bronx, and and I'm not even saying this to be funny, even yeah. though all the STDs is there too. Like I've been dealing no, with. No, that's viral that's not infections. even trying to be funny. That's the truth. Nasty motherfucker. <laughs> but all the corona is in the Bronx. It was a they had it in the news. It was a man in the Bronx. He gave like 13 people corona, and then it was Nasty. the fucking dude from New Rochelle, upstate. Upstate Nasty. is the closest thing to the Bronx. So it was all of y'all. Sorry. <laughs> Right. Sorry, all my far right people. There was oh, one yeah. case, and he was in St. John's. Period. Far right. I, I mean, I feel man. bad for y'all, but nah, I mean, you're an idiot. It's, it's crazy. Sorry, y'all. You guys are idiots. Y'all got this man up in the Bronx passing, and and Listen. like that's just like a Bronx nigga to fucking pass viruses and let's, shit around. Let, all right, I'm not a Bronx nigga, but I got a couple. Dudes, that's like my brothers. That's my, so let's be let's not be too biased here. You I'm be biased. Saying? I already know how I she's from Brooklyn. Brooklyn is the it's best. Because she's from Brooklyn, she Ooh, acting a fool. They killed Listen, Biggie. I'm from Queens. <laughs> I got LL Cool J, Nas, <laughs> everybody. Like Brooklyn is the best. Like every day, uh, winning. Period. I'm gonna be honest. Queens. Mm. No, nah, we gonna say that time before. All y'all got later. is all y'all have is Nothing. Nas, Fifty, and Listen, Nikki. What? And Nikki is the best female what? rapper, so that's Gucci. For all but my older heads the out there, y'all know who the real we MC guards is. At. We got that's Biggie. It. Like we. Uh, that's it. Do I gotta say more? We got what do you mean that's it? For look, the new school, but, we got but, but Pop listen, Smoke, R.I.P. That Man, right, you got 5 year form. All we got is Lou Got Cash. Smooth L. But, and Smooth but, L was from the hood, bro. Like, he's yeah, from, he from Gates. Br I thought he was from Brownsville. Hell no. Are that nigga's Gates? from Gates. Well, I don't know when he was raised there, but I the know that nigga. The who was doing like this? The, he was like this in the video? Yeah, yeah. yeah the retarded line, dude. <laughs> he cool, though. I like his music. It's cool. But now, nah, let's, let's be real. Not to like jump on topic, but Bronx, we have to pay their respect because they are the yeah, they started founder hip -hop. of hip hop forever. The Bronx created Boogie Down it, Bronx. Brooklyn made it better. Period. And Queens get the money. Oh my God! Like, Let's be yeah. real. Okay, I don't care who from Brooklyn. Money. If you live in Queens, you know Queens is very beautiful. Yeah, Queens is nice. And they have their ghettos. Forty projects, Red Fern projects, Edgemere, Pink Fern. You got. Ocean Bay Projects, you got Nordak, you got Queensbridge, Queensbridge Ravenswood, right, Astoria, right, you, you got one side, <laughs> you got My Hood, Hamels Projects. All right, and we got the most notorious hood in the world, what, no, Marcy Queen, Projects. Yeah, bro, Queensbridge bro, is the most notorious hood in Cal America, bro, in the you world. You go to California right now, be like, yo, no. what, pro what projects no. do you know from New York City? They're they know Jay-Z is from Marcy. They're going to say Marcy. They know Jay-Z yeah. and Memphis Bleak is from Marcy. They don't know and nobody else. Not. They know Jazzo and all that. They don't know nobody else. Bro, they know more. Brooklyn is the best. That's all right. Community. We'll say this debate for another yeah, day. But Matter I mean, fact, since we talking so, about yeah, since we, we talking about rappers, I guess fact. we could move on to a can we rap. can we get onto our rap radar? A little rap report. Thanks to our lovely host, Michelle B. 
she brought up a new idea of That's the rap I, radar. So I'm gonna I'm let her introduce it. everything, and I'm gonna just say what I how I feel. Um, but yeah, it's not really new. If y'all watch my show, y'all know Oops. I'm a huge hip hop head. Oops. Whoop whoop whoop. Um, Brooklyn all day. Whoop, whoop. Whoop. It was all a dream. I used to read Word Up magazine type shit. I need a around the way so, girl. Queens so, get the money. You know me? It's like um yeah so. Dollar Despite dollar bill, all of y'all. This corona shit. A lot of projects drop because you know it's that time of the year. Feel me? Fire, niggas is putting out their they shit before the summer drop because you already know niggas gonna be outside Side. playing the heat. Niggas say they outside, but they not really outside though. Rest so, in peace to that man. Hell Rizzo. yeah! Actually, we meant to say it last episode, but man. we didn't because we took my corona. Give a so let's say a nice little rest in peace to Pop Smoke, Brooklyn King. Bro Brooklyn me. King, Flossy King. We just gonna put it out there. <laughs> yo, like, wow, yo. But anyway, Flossy King. Um, yo, they literally fucking like. I've never seen um when they carried his body through like can mm-hmm. all see the flat bush with the white horses. Like I've never seen such a like proper burial. Like I never mm. seen such a like yeah like that's. Like y'all did because that. like, that's his hood. That's they they know him. Yeah. They love him. But like you regardless. know, niggas niggas from Brooklyn have died before, and niggas ain't do all of that. So nothing. it just was like you know, like respect. respect. Like it was yeah, good to fact. see that. It's just um. I don't. Nah, I don't want to get too negative. I'm just trying to. I'm still sketchy yeah, of that rest situation. In peace. Rest in peace. But I'm just but, gonna um, let the people talk, know. We talking about, we I'm talking about rap. He had dropped the album. Meet the Wu Two. Yeah, Meet the Wu Two. Mm. That was probably one of the first albums to really kick off like oh, this yeah. year, as far as the project dropping. Hot, hot. I don't know. I'm not gonna lie. The shit was fire, but it Listen. wasn't that fire. Like Any- it was. It was Gucci, but I do feel like a lot of niggas been playing this shit since he died. True. Like that was the best True. promo he got. Let for me. His album. Let me not. Come Contradict myself. I'm one of the people that did say on my social media, I fuck with Sm- Pop Smoke as a person, even though I didn't know him, but I didn't fuck with his music. But ever since he passed, I just happened to just stumble upon it. And it's not as his shit yeah, out. and it's not as bad yeah, as I thought it was because I just I'm an old soul, so I don't really care for the new music. But now I listen to it, his shit is all right. Nah, Meet the Wu Two was I Meet the Wu the first one fire. Hot, Meet the Wu One was I. I definitely one thing I will say though was like um with the second album he dropped it's tragic that he passed away because I would have liked to see what he would have done more because it seemed like he was kind of like I like I'm gonna keep it a buck to me he was like the Brooklyn 50 Cent if you listen to him his voice sounded like 50 Cent like he emul he told 50 Cent he emulated his rap game off him Mm -hmm. but nah what you call it I I arguable. That's so who do you feel he emulated his rap game off? Nah, of? definitely you could tell with the whole voice, the whole demeanor, mm, like yeah, the deep voice, yeah. like the whole like I'm a gangster baby, but like yeah. look, like feel me, like you sound just, like just that to throw shit. it out there, Fifty Cent Queens, Forty Projects oh Gangster, that's lucky. a real G. You lucky though, cause I love Fifty Cent. I love Fifty Cent. It's funny because no like my favorite rappers are from Queens. Hmm? Yeah, like and she talk all that hot shit. About I do talk all that hot shit, but when it comes to rap, Bro- a rap lot of Brooklyn rap. women love Queens. No, just throwing that I out there. Queens rappers, I hate Queens niggas. Well, we're not. That's another, we, I'm just talking about a general another, statement. Another song. <laughs> well, she's a cuff woman, so we don't have to discuss none of that. But um, you yeah. feel me? So anyway, it's like um, yeah. So Meet the Wu Two definitely was. It was all right, but I want to talk about how. This nigga G Herbo just dropped the whole ball. PTSD. PTSD was trash. Little I baby think it was had fire. The best. Little Uzi Vert had the best no, album. No, little baby got the best album out right if, now. If, I'm sorry, y'all. If you as really want to throw it out there, Jada Kiss had a fire album too. Just throw that out there. And J Electronica. No, <laughs> never. I'm talking Sorry. about as far as all of these new, new niggas ra- that just I'm going to be honest. Yes. Lil Little Baby, baby had the, the fire. Project. He but got the best one. All right. I'm not, all right. Forget her right now. We just going to keep it a buck. All of that money. Between Lil Baby and Lil Uzi, y'all take that Nah, pick. what you call it? I feel like, all right. Y'all take Lil, that Lil, because you, you jumped on Lil Uzi. I wasn't even going to talk about that because they finally guy. free Lil Uzi. They free Lil Uzi. Hey. Wait. Did he sell his soul? I don't know. Probably. Did he? I hope not. Cause he's really a good rapper. 
But they finally freed Lil Uzi up out that Uzi. fucked up contract. But then again, he signed to Rock Nation, so he don't Ooh. know if he signed himself to even. You know what he did? Contract. Anything involved with Jay Z, and that's God. God rest. God love me forever. That's my favorite rapper of all time. He sold this so. Lil Uzi sold this so. Fuck nah, what you were, yeah, wait, he had wait. to. Lil, you said Lil Uzi. You said he sold signed a Rock Nation. He had to. But now nah, he been saying he sold nigga, his soul. Because remember when he went viral and was like, um, you're going to hell now at his concert? Yeah. Like, that's a gimmick to him. He got a whole song called All My Friends Is Dead. Yeah, like, push me to the edge. Yeah, he said that he was going to um, kill himself with Charles Manson before The Rock ever got involved in that shit. Let so. me be real. A lot of people that know the Illuminati that's involved, every rapper that's. The Illuminati is not. So Real. Okay, we'll get to that. <laughs> so, for the people that sell a soul to whoever these people are, just know every major rapper has made a song regarding selling their soul. Yeah, if you but have I not feel like closely. when I feel like when rappers, because not just rappers said that they sold, they sold. Country artists say they sold their yeah, soul. Yeah, of course. Pop artists. This bitch, Katy Perry, says she sold but, soul. But we want to pertain to the people that we generate at the regular basis, but and they what understand. What I'm saying is, I don't believe the Illuminati is real for one reason. If that shit was really a secret society, how do you know about it? Mm, you got a point. Like, it, like, like, except, like you, me. I'm a realist. One thing about me, I love about myself is I'm a realist. Like, a lot of people can't be real with themselves because they, like, I hold myself here, but I also know my reality. Mm, and it's just like if the Illuminati was real, True. why would my basic ass know about it? You right. And a lot of people don't know about the um the wealthiest families in the world that actually run the world. Yeah. A lot of people now, don't see, know that. That shit people need to know about. That shit people yeah. need to look into. Rothschilds, Rockefellers. Yeah, exactly. Rothschilds. JP Morgan. Yeah, exactly. You got Goldman Hilton. and Sachs. Like, we could go on for days at the end Period. of the day. But we don't want to get too deep because, you know, people get real jealous sometimes. But, yeah. So, it's just one of them things. Um... It's just one of them things, yeah. Y'all gotta, um, y'all gotta wake up instead of thinking Illuminati is out to get us. But, just think that they are. But please, people, let us know but how no. you feel about that little baby, little Uzi. Album. No, Anybody I'm gonna tell them how they feel. So, so t- talk the reason to why I feel like Little Baby got the best album is because I feel like anything that motivates you to do better than what you were doing before is better because it's just like, feel me like, by you listening to a Little Baby album, you're not just supporting him. You're not just paying his bills and keeping his lights on and shit like that. You learning how to keep your lights on. Yeah. Like, you know how to, I yeah. feel like Lil Uzi shit is just like really vibes like when you want to get lit. Yeah. So in that aspect, yeah, but I feel like Little Baby like anytime he drop a project he motivate the hood like he get the whole hood inspired like and like that nigga it's not to cut you off no, but you even like from his documentary his documentary is called preacher man he's calling preacher man from this young like the nigga really sound like he prophesying when he rapped like yeah but he's a he's a, he might be a prophecy but uh g herb will prof, a prophet too bro, at the end of the day no the fuck he is i feel like he's a prophet for the people who don't listen to the mainstream media anymore Look, he's different. There's a difference between G Herbal and Little Herb. Little Herb was on the mainstream rocking, going crazy. G Herbal, when he came into his grown man form and started really talking that real politics shit, shit he just fell back. And people I don't, don't know respect how him as much. Listen to G Herbal. You have to really, for me, I respect your opinion, but for me, you have to really listen to G Herbal to understand what I he's mean, talking about. I mean, I listened about. to PTSD and I didn't like nothing on there. I feel you. And not for nothing, I just like, I just don't like Herb. Like I uh, like I don't know what it is. Like I gave him I, so many fucking chances, but I just don't like. I him. just have a question for the people. And it's what, not because of Ari. It, and it's not because I'm being biased. What did G Herbal do in his rap tone or style that made you just dislike him all of a sudden? Because everybody was on his beef when he was Little Herb. Yeah, Little everybody Herb was, was fire. On his beef. I mean, yeah, that's two different personas. But at the end of the day, niggas was fucking with G Herb when he first changed his name to G Herb. Bro, I just feel like what's Herb son? Is he a Virgo? I don't know. I, I didn't think get too he deep is into a Virgo. That. I think Herb is a Virgo. And one thing about Virgos, most famous people are Virgos. One thing about Virgos is they like to say a bunch of nothing. I've only True. met two Virgos in my entire life, and one of them is here right now that that actually know what the fuck they be talking about when they talk. Virgos don't know shit. My father's like a Virgo. He's a piece of shit. 
Yeah, and, and don't the father shit. walk around like he knows something? He swear he big man on campus. He only like 5'5", five, five, little nigga. See, see. I'm and the big I brother. Think I might be wrong, but I think like Herb, he might have to have Virgo somewhere on his charts if he's Can't not be. a Virgo. Because when I listen to him, that's what I feel like I you hear. feel like he a talk about you nothing? Yeah, like like it sound good, but when you actually listen to what he's saying, I, it's like this nigga ain't really saying can much. I, can I be real? Um, correct me if I'm wrong on this analysis. I feel like G Herbo is the Jada Kiss. Oh no! no wait, hold on, hold on. Oh, I'm not saying no. no. Hear me, hear me. I'm not saying he's on Jada Kiss level, but what I'm saying is he's the Jada Kiss to the new style rappers. You feel Elaborate. what I'm saying? Elaborate. Elaborate Like He speaks on nothing. real shit He speaks on real yeah, street shit Yeah talk about real shit But Kiss could also rap Yeah But G Herbo could rap too nah, It's evident Lil from Herb previous G Herbo That's still the same person so though Just no, different it's names not. G Herbo It's the same person G Herbo can't Yo Little Herb Used to rap on beat Maybe, Little Herb Used to make sense When he rapped people don't understand rap. G Herbo like, can still do the same thing Little Herb was doing it's just he, he chose the, He changed I watched the interview And he like, said he feel, changed his I rap style way, Because of Jay Z it's a lot of Chicago rappers that change their rap style, like Dirk, for example. Chief Keef. Dirk, yeah, Chief Keef. Chief Keef not even popping no more. But that aside, because I don't even want to get Six on that, because that broke my that's heart. That's my guy. I'm going to yeah, be honest. I love Chief, Chief Keef. Keef, one of my favorite when Chief Chicago Keef, ever. When Chief Keef first came out, I was like in, in sixth grade, and I think I was his biggest fan. <laughs> like, I think I had to be one of his biggest fans. Funny dope. Hell Yeah. <laughs> But what you call it? Nah, Chief Keith. One thing I'm gonna say about Chief Keith is it broke my heart how he's not like. I feel like right now Chief Keith should be where Young Thug is as far as like engineering he a new put, sound. He put he Chicago put, drill rap exactly, on the map. Exactly. Exactly. The first one and to there go wouldn't home. be a lot of the drill rappers. Period. Without Chief Keith, Ch yes. so it just hurts me but when I see him. Like, cause you Young to, Thug is the pioneer of mumble rap. The way I see it is Chief Keef is pioneer I'm going to be honest. Can we be real? I think Lil Wayne is, but Lil Wayne doesn't mumble rap. He just influenced other no, rappers. No, no, no. Like I say this all the time. I don't fuck with Young Lil Thugger. Lil Wayne influenced yes. mumble rap. Yes. But Young Thug pioneered that shit. He took that shit by the horns of and course said, he did. Ride, nigga. <laughs> like, bro, nobody understood oh, okay. him. Bro, this is how I know that Chief, not Chief Keep, Young Thug is the first mumble rapper. And I don't even like to say mumble rapper because I understand. Young I think Thug. Young Thug can really flow, though. Yo, Young Not Thug a hater. Rap. He can flow. Yo, yo, He's like Lil Uzi. Him and Lil Uzi. I'm not, Yo, I'm not trying to be fried. Flows. They really yeah. Nah, what you call it? People say that shit all the time, though. Like, Lil Uzi is probably, mm -hmm. like, not yet because he's still young, but but I'm he's goaded. I'm like, going to keep he, it he's above. A, he's a goat. I'm going to be honest. People might hate me for this. Lil Uzi way better than Young Thugger. Oh, no. See, don't. don't. I believe Bro, it. there be no Lil you Uzi have to without live Young Thug. It. This is what I'm trying to Lil explain Thug, to Young Thug can flow and all that, Bro. but Lil Uzi different. No, He's Lil different. Uzi is different. He's I'm not different. taking that. I feel like you can't compare them because it's different. just like it's just like comparing. He's like Lil Wayne It's like comparing the apprentice to the master. Yes, yeah. one day the apprentice succeeds the master, but you can't say the apprentice is better than the master because they learned everything but, that they know from the master. But nobody, they just learned how to whip it with finesse. But nobody has succeeded the Grandmaster Lil Weezy. Just throwing that because out Because Young Thug hasn't done it yet. He's never going yes, to. Yes, he is. He's never going to. Yes, he is. To. He already Lil technically Wayne is has. is the man. But anyway, that uh, aside, mm. Young Thug is the GOAT Thugger. because I've never heard someone say that, oh, I can't understand this until Lifestyle dropped. Until that song nah, that song made him popping. Like nobody understood that shit. That he was the first mumble rapper. That's the first time I seen people online like, yo, what the fuck do this nigga be but this saying? Shit fire. What the fuck do this nigga be saying? Exactly. But the shit fire. Bro, and if you really listen to Young Thug, like he be nah, talking he nice. some, he spit. some real shit. Like I'll never forget Check when he first came out. That was like on his first Ooh, album. Check. Nigga check. say if I go to jail, wait, what did he say? If I go to jail, I'm a um I'm a flip me some racks. Police pull me over. I put that crack in my, my crack, rack. or I put that brack in my, my brack. brack. Like, this nigga, like, he just, like... I, I remember that line. It was fire. It was fire. Like, the nigga, the, this nigga is, like, something different. Like, he's he's something mm. different. And as far as his sound, nobody, yeah, he's influenced by Lil Wayne, but he has his own sound. Because Lil, he does. He never, like, Lil Wayne has never sound like Young Thug. And that's not taking nothing from He just abused the auto-tune. Because... 
Young Thug, uh, not Young Thug. Lil Wayne is the 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 goat. type rapper, the, the goat, goat of this generation. Like he influenced the, the entire goat. generation. If it's not Wayne, it's Drake, and I'm, if it's not Drake, it's, I would never it's put Nikki. Drake. I would never put Drake above Lil Wayne in my life. Kill I yourself. Wouldn't, I wouldn't Kill yourself if you above, believe Drake is better, because Lil Wayne seated that man. Made that man I, I wouldn't put no him, homo. I wouldn't put him above Lil Wayne, but I feel like as far as influence, as far as what influence, influence as far right, as I'm influence hit me out, yeah. they're the same level. Because with these new rappers, no, no, no. With these new rappers, they either a, a Wheezy baby or they a Drake baby. And what I mean by that mm -hmm. is these new rappers, they either super duper emotional and in their feelings like Drake right. or they on their super duper weed shit. Like they Yo, on their rock star shit. I mean, I'm... Or they both, and if they both, you Drake and Weezy kid. But but Perry. Drake been doing, th <laughs> but Drake's been doing things real men should have been doing from before he like ever came what? out. Be emotional, I'm not saying. Bro, that shit is a like gimmick a for Drake. Emotion. So you telling me because Drake man, is a Scorpio? I know that nigga is rude as fuck on the So love. let me ask. Yeah, he's a whore. But let me. And, and he, he, and he had a kid. And he denied. Kid. And push it to you the violate. But and he said he, had, bro, he said he hasn't seen his child since last Christmas. Yeah, we Not know he's Christmas a piece of shit. Past. Jews can be a piece of shit too when it comes That's to That's how he he's got Jewish. so much money. Not trying to come at any religion, but he's <laughs> Yo, Jewish. I feel like this is so going on. We just want to put it out place. there. Jews are not um, holy either. They do some foul sick shit. Bro, Jews bought the block and kicked everybody Yeah, we know they do. They're trying to gentrify the whole Brooklyn, bro, but we're not about to go into everybody that. Everybody hate Jews except for Jews. I love and, Jews. And there's you know a good saying that, that when it's everybody but you, it's you. It's and you. I feel like that's the thing with let Jews me, right you now. now. You know why I love <laughs> Jews? Because they pay up. And I love get, taking their money. Why? Because I work for them. So. Yeah, see, but you work for them. Yeah. Low key, they could be paying you and own your whole corporation. Of course. And they just smart. They do masonry stuff. They keep everything within the family, the neighborhood. So they yeah. always gonna be rich. Just like India. That's family. how. But no funny shit. Somebody that told me that shit. Somebody was like, "Yo, how y'all think Drake's so good with money? Not he's like Jewish. He's Jewish. His pops and his mom's Jewish. Bro, and he was raised by his mother. His mother's moms, the Jewish parent. Moms. It's crazy because people overlook that through all the years. Like that's the first thing they tell you. Like, yeah, he's a Jew. He's a Jew. he's a Canadian Jew. And everybody like, oh, he's just Drake. That nigga got money. He been had money before he yeah, had money. Yeah, he been had money. So how you think he Pools, was making all these all fire? How you think he was making them fire Bro, features? Bro, fuck all of that. This nigga was first on started. Degrassi, one wheelchair. of the biggest, one of the biggest television shows you, internationally, not in, even in the in U.S. History. Because it's it's a Canadian TV a Canadian show movie. and it was huge and multiple. But it was different fire in America though, because everybody was watching. Yeah, that's what I'm saying though. Twenty five years. For twenty five years. And he years. didn't come on until later on. Uh huh. And he came in in one of the most notorious seasons of it. True. And he was in a wheelchair. Mm -hmm. Yeah, Drake said yeah, he was in a wheelchair. But so, Drake is smart. Drake might look that bad. Smart. Like if you look at it, like he's he's a piece of shit. But as one thing be, I'm cool. always curious about with Drake. Is what if he had to just stuck the acting? Like, could you imagine Drake as like a Will Smith? I can like, see just Drake. in every role. I'm not gonna front. I could see Drake as a good actor. Me too. Like right now, if he want, if 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 he was on a Jay Z model and he just say, "I'm retiring for rapping" or whatever, he would just go into acting because he he has that outlet already. But I don't do think it. he ever want to act again. Like I, I think, think so. I think because what you call it, he was a like a lot of people don't notice about Drake, but I notice because I'm into acting. I'm an actress. Like if you look up Drake's IMBD, um, Degrassi wasn't the only successful show in Canada he was on. We all we all Americans, so we don't know we don't that. See those Canadian but shows. If y'all if y'all um look at his IMBD, he was on a lot of successful so Canadian. Teen shows so, so from childhood so i feel like drake would never act again not because the money but just because it's something that he had to do like when he yeah. was younger he like no it's choice. something he didn't really have a choice to do yeah. so even though he good at it it's just like nah i'm a i'm a stick with what i'm good but at yo, that i like but you know there's people that just have to stay relevant after a while so you he's think gonna, that's gonna be drake i think he is Drake is a he's he's very low key, but Drake is out there. First off, he's the ambassador of the Toronto Raptors, so he don't even gotta go to acting. He's gonna make money doing that anyway. He's Toronto's ambassador regardless. Yo, he got, he got the weak. whole country on his back. He has a whole country on his back. So you 
He's if the biggest at, star from Canada. Yeah, so if you come at Drake, you basically coming at the whole Canada. Bro, he's bigger than Canada. Justin Bieber. And Justin Bieber's and that's a lit nigga. A lot. That's saying a lot for, for a white boy from Canada. Because Justin Bieber been lit since he was like 14 years mm-hmm. old. Bro, you want to oh know what's funny, God. though? Drake and Justin Bieber, that got lit around the same time. Yes. Around the it? same what time. Was it like 2008? 2006, 2008. I think, two, no lie, 2007 was like the year that just started everything, the transition. Yeah. And then two, the, the 2010s, once it hit 2010, that's when it really transitioned into like Because this is you got to think be. about it. In 2007, 2008, it was that's still like when social media, um, like as far as like and chat rooms, um, alternate realities and stuff like that, that's when that started getting really popular. Yeah. So from there, when niggas got older, it's just like we used to us. Because like I remember in 2007, I had an IMVU. I had a Woo's world. Like, I was already in all of these alternative Listen, worlds. AIM was fire. For anybody that know AIM, AIM was the shit. Yeah. Woo Woo, MySpace. You could create, customize your own page. That shit was fire. So, let's get into Lil Baby album. Did you listen to Lil Baby album? Yeah, 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 What yeah. songs with this album did you like? I like commercial with Lil Uzi Vert. Just throwing oh that out God. there. Oh, my God. Just throwing that out there. That's really my favorite song, so my I'm not going to talk about it. My favorite song? On that album was consistent. Did you hear that shit? Tell them I caught a switch it. Tell them my whole new bitch that's me, crazy. please. Song is fire. Nah, what you call? But I like the. That's what I'm talking about with with little baby though. Like this nigga, like he got bro. Even fucking heating up with Gunna. You heard that shit? Fire. Like, this nigga, like, he motivates you, like, inconsistent. He telling you, like, whatever I'm going to be, I'm going to be consistent. So, so whether it's good or bad, I'm going to be consistent in whatever you do. And I feel like us young black people, we need to hear shit like that. Like, whatever you into, be consistent. Emotionally scarred. Like, he's admitting, like, my emotions are flawed. Like, I, like, bro, it's just so much. Like, that whole album is just fire. Can I? Everything they doing on... The music now for the new age rappers, like that's what natural life is, like expressing yourself. They're just doing it through music. Now it's so confined where people's socialism skills are so bad. Yeah. They have to do it through music now. And that's the only way you can express yourself is all right, you playing your girl this song so she know that you feel it. Nigga, you you can't do it like back in the nineties or like early two thousands where you just like, Oh, sure. I y'all. dated a dude like that. Like the only way he knew how to communicate was through music and it was it was cool for a little while, cause every time he, I get mad at him. Or every time we go through something, he just write a song about me and write a verse about me. Aww. But after a while, it's just like, no, nigga, you have to talk. Like you have to say what the fuck is bothering you. Like I can't wait till you drop. I can't wait till you drop a new song to know what's wrong with you. I feel like I feel like a man. It's more of a man if he just express himself at the end of the day because a woman's going to respect you just coming out the face regardless of the response some you get. Some women. Some women are pieces of shit. They're childish. Yeah. Let me put it that way. Mentally, they're not ready for that type of TED Talk. Sorry, ladies. But... Y'all not ready. A lot of y'all not ready for this TED Talk because yeah, y'all very young Yeah, women are... Oh, excuse me. I just burnt mad loud into the mic. I call women... <laughs> <laughs> Oops. But yes, a lot of y'all women are fucking toxic. Like I feel like they're not toxic. Y'all very like no, they're toxic. Single, like like very close minded. Yes, everything. very close minded. Yeah. Because not for nothing, it's like one society is taught women to only care about men. So to a default, we're close minded. But also to an extent, I will say this: like it's not that serious, ladies. Like I, I feel like. Most women that have that mindset have just never been single and not focused on the niggas. Never so had your father in your life. That too, that too. But we ain't even gonna talk on that. But even that, I feel like it's a whack excuse though, because it's a lot of people without their father. Out. Most people don't have their father in there's, their life. There's more fathers in 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 kids' lives today than there was back in. Yeah, the day. and when I say today, I mean niggas my age having yeah, kids. Yeah, because back then, de- back then, y'all daddies was selling crack, doing all types of stuff, probably a dope head and all that. Mm-hmm. So they wasn't home. Nowadays, fathers is real life smart and up coming home from jail like all right i'm gonna actually take care of my kid yeah. there's dudes out there that have one night stands with shorties have a baby and be like yo i'm gonna take care of the kid yeah and never even give a fuck I about know the baby niggas like that yo let me like tell y'all too. something right now as far as like parenting and parents in this generation yeah, it's really split like it's either you an ancient mother or you an ancient, ancient dad. dad but one thing i can say is niggas in this generation is taking care of their kids for some reason they are why because 
what they have left if they just leave their kid? What do they have? Not left? only that, but I feel like in this generation we all have attachment issues. So I feel like literally the only way for us to attach is to have a baby. So I'm, that's like the only person wow. we are gonna go hard for. Sorry, I can't speak for other Jews, but I I, I can't be attached that hard for you to want to baby. You know? No, 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 not attached to who they fucking that hard. I mean. As far as we, this generation oh, has, it, yeah. this generation has issues with being together. Like we have issues with like, you know, working through our problems, being together, mm-hmm. being like, you know. So when a little baby is involved, it's just wow. like, like well, now what, what's the crossroad now? Yeah. But nowadays these relationships they come in like a week. You could talk to a girl for one day, the next day you link her, the next day that you fuck her, and then. Yeah, she's either pregnant or she's your girlfriend. Y'all so called in love, and y'all don't even know what love is like. You know what I'm saying? Like it's right. just weird. Like, what is it? Like, what what was the drastic change? And I feel like social media is the reason why people don't have the social skills to like cooperate in the relationship world and just the social socialism world. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, because it's just so easy to block somebody on Facebook. Yeah, like fuck you. Yeah, like you're not gonna see him out in the street. New York's smaller than you think, people. We will find you. No, but care. I definitely, I definitely do feel like with um, but our generation, it's more so one of those things where like niggas just get to be with each other. Yeah, like that's niggas right. is just like niggas just don't want that commitment. But having a baby is just like whether well, you want the commitment right. or not, they here. So you might as well like it's it's no making no commitment. It's either you do or you don't. don't. And if your child don't fuck with you, your child don't fuck, fuck with you. Fuck with you. <laughs> and parents, don't be God bless you. Thank you. Parents, I I'm tipsy. Of course, of course. Oh yeah, I forgot. We can't get her drunk no more. <laughs> I'm Quick, not fun fact. Though. But a lot of parents don't like all right, this is a topic I always feel like a lot of parents feel like because th- that's their child whatever they say their opinion always matters and the child opinion doesn't matter no that's no a fact. yeah and that's not the truth because at the end of the yeah, day once not- once the child becomes a certain age you have to respect that person's opinion because at yeah. the end of the day they're more than just that age they're, they're a human being yeah now. they're grown enough built with experiences yeah, and they're grown enough to process their own thoughts and uh, elaborate how they feel mm-hmm. so as a parent you should sit back and say okay maybe i should listen to my child and see how they feel but then again i feel like as far as children like there has to be a balance like yes your child is a human so you have to value who they are like their opinions what they like and this that third even if it even if you think it's bullshit at the end of the day this is still a person this is still someone who yo i like this shit but there also has to be a balance because I feel like there are people like Dwayne Wade. Like I feel like certain stuff, not necessarily um, certain things. Not that your child can't express themselves. It's the way he's going about. But it's about how they go about, about it. it. And you also still have to know, like I'm, I'm your parent. So even though you're young, you're impressionable. You like this, you like that. There's more to the world than that. So you have to know that life is dangerous. Honestly, it's not about what you do in life. It's how you do it. Yeah. It's everything or how you do it. Exactly. Because you can do anything. It's just how you do it. You got you either going to do it the dummy way or the smart way. Right. It's your choice to choose. But it all, all in all, I just feel like um, just like closing out all the thoughts that we, yeah, had, we had like today. Because we said a lot of we shit today. Feast. Wash our hands. That's wash one. our hands. That but, is number one. That's the top of the ref, list. Listen. Still wash our hands. I don't give a fuck what you believe. If you think black people can't get, can corona, I get some of that? I just yes. want the people to yes. know that the that the co-host also going to use. Yes, just want that's why it's here. I'm saying because. Wash our hands, sanitize our hands. hands. Like I said at the beginning of this broadcast, when I say this entire, when I tell you this entire office is wiped down, bleached down. Period. Thank, like, thank you, OG Math. We just want to give a love and a shout out to the OG Math. <laughs> yes, shout keeping out to SG Media for being one of the cleans, keeping the this most room cleansing afloat. offices in this building. Uh, if y'all actually have been in this building, visited this building, y'all know we are the cleanest office. Yes. Period. They need a janitor um, in here. It's number there. two, little baby is the best rapper of this generation. Little Uzi. <laughs> Young Thug is the Little goat. <laughs> Little Wayne is the grandmaster. Betty the Butcher. 
Oh, Griselda, can we get on that before we close? I love me some Benny Butcher, West Side Gun, I just and Conway. To Griselda. I'm not gonna lie, Griselda is fire. I've been dealing with them since so they had the. Uh, bright, brick, the but what's that? Brick. The baby talk? Now. Yeah, they're working with Kanye West and they signed to Rock Nation. Now that might be scary though, cause Rock Nation nah. got bro. Yo, Rock Nation just... got Kanye signed to a deal that I... say he can never quit music. Why I think Kanye is so crazy? Let's That's why. know br- Kanye been dealing with Rock Nation since Rock Nation was Rockefeller exactly. and he was producing for Jay Z all the fire. He beat. signed to a deal that, that say he there. can never leave the music industry. Listen, after he made the song The Rock and he made that beat. Kanye been locked in forever. Why? Forever. Because Jay Z know that Kanye is so intelligent when it comes to music and producing that we can never let him go. There's nobody like Kanye right now in the producing but, industry. But because Kanye Timberland, is still a human, we should Scott let Storch. him go. <laughs> like nah, we have to let him go. I don't care at what some anybody point. say. Oh, but okay. What I will say is Wash thank you all. Yes, wash your hands. Thank you all for tuning in with us for another episode of the Rent Out Podcast. I know y'all thank all you, are probably you. home quarantined. So just one thing, one thing. I know y'all all are probably home quarantined, stressed out. Y'all worried like what I'm going to do about work. Nice. I'm out of what work. What am I going to do about so. food? Yeah, stuff. what am I going to do about food? Is Dre telling the truth? Is niggas really about to start killing each other over food? Well, they can do their podcast here, 25 dollars for two hours you ever speak about anything we'll put them on on, on sg media um, li- um things and they can make money with their podcast you it's a coronavirus sale yes we have a coronavirus sale 25 dollars for two hours you can have your podcast here s dot street media you can have you can talk about whatever you want we don't give a fuck if you talk about porno at the end of the day you can definitely come in here and talk about some but please anything. leave the porno sorry, limited <laughs> <laughs> i'm sorry i just had to throw yes. that out. i'm a reckless guy this is the burnout podcast i am your host rebecca show and i'm your co-host Host Dre, aka D Hustler, and this is the, the Burnout, Burnout Podcast. Podcast. Have we a good are night. Out, bitches. Fuck.